So this is my top secret question that I would ask your kids in a family therapy session to find out everything I need to know, well, almost everything, about your parenting style and the red flags that I would look out for with their answers. Quick heads up if you're a therapist or a clinician watching this, this is an edit of another video I've made for parents. Uh, this version of the video has a whole bunch more structural and strategic theory in it, as well as clinical applications. Enjoy! I'm Oliver and I'm a family systems therapist and I love helping parents understand the people patterns that get in the way of them having great relationships with their teens and tweens. Now, if you want to find out your own parenting style, take the free quiz, the links below, and be sure to sign up for the email list because then you'll get the full printable parent assessment, which is part of a 12 page parenting styles guide. The question I would ask your kids to find out everything I need to know about your parenting style is, parents ideally need to be part boss and part friend. What percentage boss and what percentage friend is each of your parents? So I ask that to every child in the room and I have never needed to explain that I'm not talking about being a literal friend or a literal boss. They seem to get the abstract thinking better than some adults. Um, their answers are always illuminating, often hilarious and usually a surprise to parents. Leave me a comment below and let me know what your kids would say or what they did say if you asked them. I'm a structural family systems therapist and the theory I work from says that a healthy family hierarchy has caregivers in charge. And all I mean by that is that we don't want kids to be the boss of the household. I mean, there's a reason we're not letting eight-year-olds drive to school or buy cigarettes. They're too young and we have to protect them from certain adult responsibilities. Now, in a similar way, we don't let our kids run the family. They're too young and we don't let them have that responsibility. And that's because there's too much pressure that comes with it. An ideal family might look like this, with the people who have the most power being at the top of the diagram. And that would be adults. Under 18 year olds would have less power and would be lower down than them. Now, if there's more than one child in the family, the older child might have a bit more power or responsibility than the younger one. Perhaps this older child babysits or helps with homework. I would not have any problem with a family structure that looked like this because the parents are at the top and they are the people with the most power, authority and influence. We know from decades of research and studying that families with the structure in which there are healthy boundaries and a hierarchy in which parents are in charge are much more likely to produce young adults who are happy, healthy, well-adjusted people. Now, parenting styles have a lot to do with this because all a parenting style means is your approach that you take to raising your children. And when it comes to raising children, there's an element of influence, power and responsibility that we have inherently being caregivers or parents um, and being the adults. So a very strict or discipline oriented parenting approach might make it very clear that children are below the parents. So we might represent that looking like this. The parents in this type of family have all of the power and they enforce that power with expectations, consequences and discipline. Now, a new age family or a free range family might have a family diagram that looks more like this. So these parents are still very much in charge. They call the shots at the end of the day, but there is an active decision in both families to empower their kids wherever possible. And that means that the kids move slightly closer towards the parents on my diagram. So when I'm asking kids in family therapy what percentage boss and what percentage friend each of their parents are, what I'm really doing is trying to get a sense of how much power they feel they have in the family. If a child feels that they have no power whatsoever in the family, they're going to say that their parents are 100% bosses. And that's because a boss has all the power, right? In your job, the boss tells you what to do, when to do it and how long you're going to do it for. So if a child were to tell me that, I might start thinking that their parents are high achieving parents, disciplined parents, perhaps even tiger parents. These parenting styles are notorious for being more boss-like. They have high expectations and lots of rules and consequences. So I would obviously start envisioning the family structure to look more like this. So if a child feels that their parent is mainly a boss, but does relate to them in a softer, caring or softer way, they will change that percentage to include some amount of friend into the mix. So maybe they would say it's 80% boss, 20% 
friend, my diagram would adjust a little bit to accommodate that and there'd be a little less distance between the parent and the child to reflect that it's not all boss. So what happens if a child says that their parent is a 100% friend? Well, first of all, I'm going to be making sure other people in the family agree with this before I take any of it to be 100% true. But if everyone does agree that the parent and child dynamic is very soft and warm and fluffy and not at all boss-like, my family diagram might look like this. So a high percentage in friend might indicate that the child feels that they are equal to or have as much influence or power as their parent. They might feel that they have more power than is age appropriate. So my diagram shows lots of closeness, perhaps too much closeness, and puts the child on a more of an equal footing as the parent. Answers like this would make me start to wonder if the parent was a jellyfish parent or a free-range parent who are less focused on rules, consequences and boundaries. Um, these parenting styles are more focused on being warm, accepting and loving. So the power differential is less palpable to the child and they're going to feel like parents are more friends. There's a couple of red flags that I look out for. And to be clear, this question about boss and friends is not enough on its own to mean anything other than to alert me that maybe I've got some more digging to do. So if you are a parent and you ask your kids this question and they answer with one of the replies that I'm going to talk about in a minute, it doesn't mean anything's wrong with your family. I incorporate so much more data. So I do a full family assessment, I do a detailed intake, and I use all the information I can get before I start making assumptions that anyone's family looks like this based on one question I ask a kid. The first red flag that I look out for is when a child has too much power. And that would be indicated by the child giving both caregivers very high scores in the friend category. Too much power means that they're calling the shots in the family. And this most often takes the form of emotional hostage taking. That sounds like making a lot of threats. Like, if you don't let me stay out late, I'm going to run away. Or if you make me go to school tomorrow, I will kill myself. I'm not saying that to be dramatic. That is literally something that I've heard. Emotional hostage taking statements are aimed directly at your most vulnerable pain points around fear and loss and loving them so much. The parent style most likely to have difficulty in tolerating this is the jellyfish parent. Uh, they generally have a hard time setting rules and enforcing limits. So with the emotional hostage taking, they don't stand a chance. A family hierarchy that has this going on looks like this, and I call it a democratic hijack. The child has sort of bullied their way into having more power or more say in what goes on in the family than we would want. Haley talks about hierarchy as a way of separating family members out into different levels of power and status. So we've got a child subsystem and a parent subsystem, and they're separate. A confused or an unclear hierarchy is one in which the status positions are ambiguous. So a child doesn't know which subsystem they belong in. So remember that we know from many years of research that healthy, well-adjusted young adults come from families in which the boundaries are clear between parents and children and parents have more influence and power in the system than the teens or tweens do. On the flip side, we also know that less well-adjusted Unhealthy young adults come from families in which there's an imbalance in the power and unclear boundaries. So the other red flag that I look for occurs when there are two caregivers present. And I'm trying to use the word caregiver a lot because I have seen this dynamic play out in which it was a single parent family and the grandparent was the other primary caregiver. The situation that might cause me some concern is when one caregiver has a wildly different percentage from the other. I'm also obviously going to take into consideration the presenting problem, what the family is coming to see me about. If a child has acting out behaviours, what we call oppositional traits, I might start thinking about exploring if there's a good cop, bad cop dynamic going on between caregivers. That means that one caregiver is 90 or 100% friend and the other is 90 or 100% boss. So this could be an indication that there's a soft, hard split going on in the family. And that is just the official terminology for <laughs> saying there's a good cop, bad cop dynamic between caregivers going on. 
This can create all kinds of problems for the family, both in the relationship between the parents or caregivers and the child. So all couples are dealing with the issue of sharing power, uh, especially when they're at the top of the hierarchy with kids. And couples can divide power in a million different ways. If you do the taxes, I'll do the cooking, or I'll buy groceries for the year if you pay rent. I don't know. There's a million ways that you can juggle it out. This is often done unconsciously and sometimes consciously. When the co-parents or caregivers are balanced with their power, we're much more likely to have a stable hierarchy with parents on top and in charge. One way that this can get imbalanced is when one parent gets extra power in the family by siding with a teenager. That makes it a two against one scenario. So that dynamic tends to undermine the decision another party made. Let me give you a quick example of this. So let's imagine dad comes home and says, let's go to Florida this summer to visit my parents. And the teenager in the family grumbles and groans about it. He really doesn't want to go to Florida. Mom would take the side of the teenager and say something like, well, we did go last year and it's a very long trip. I don't think we should. Dad essentially gets voted off the island, right? He doesn't get to see his parents this summer. But who really called the shots in that scenario? It was the teenager who grumbled and groaned. And it was when mum aligned with him that dad got undermined and voted off. In an ideal situation, mum and dad should have had that discussion separately, maybe with some input from their kid, but that shouldn't have been hashed out in a family situation because that's a parent level decision. So this pattern will create a cycle in which one parent's softness elicits more of the toughness from the other parent in a reciprocal manner. And when the teen perceives that they're getting support from the softer parent, that gives them permission to escalate their negative behavior. So now whenever dad suggests something, he's going to grumble and groan because he knows that mom is going to take his side and they'll vote dad off. That leaves dad or the tough parent on the outside of a triangle feeling isolated and disconnected from the family. So they're more likely to come in with more critical or more controlling behavior. And whenever that happens, mom's going to take the side of the child and go against dad. And the more controlling behavior or more critical behavior that dad comes in with, the more likely the teen is going to complain and grumble and we're in a loop. Now, most often the soft parent disagrees with the hard parent, but is either afraid or unsuccessful in challenging the other parent. And perhaps they're even resentful that they've been bullied or not being able to voice their opinions for a long time and that encourages them to take the side of the teen even more. They're using that coalition with the teenager to undermine and sort of uh, uh, passively aggressively get back at the other parent. This dynamic causes a huge amount of tension between the caregivers so now we've got marital distance going on. Mum and dad or the two parents are drifting further apart. I would be very concerned if one parent was playing good cop permanently and the other parent playing bad cop permanently. And that could be an indication that there's this cross-generational alliance, which is a fancy way of saying a parent and a child gang up against the other parent. This is actually a very disturbing experience for a child, at least unconsciously, because they're getting two very different messages from either parent. One parent is treating them like a co-parent and the other is treating them like a child. That's very confusing for a child. And I've actually read research that says that this family formation is present in a high percentage of substance users in a residential treatment center. So it might be correlated to substance use. Hopefully you can see the potential amount of information I can get from just one question to your kids in family therapy. I know, of course, I do combine it with other data points that I'm getting before I act on anything. Hit follow and subscribe if you want more family systems or parenting videos. And if you have questions you want me to answer, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to make a video for you.